I'm the news that nobody expected. I was never a part of your plan. I'm the reason why life as you know it feels like slipping through your trembling hands. And the doctors say I'm just an option. A mistake you can make disappear. I may not have a voice, but I'm more than a choice. I'm as real as the heartbeat you hear. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. I am God's miracle in the making. Proof that all things can work for the good. I am fingers and toes and heaven already knows the name you pick out for me already belongs to me. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. Every life is sacred and every life is a gift and every life deserves a chance to live i know you're scared i know you're scared i know you're scared right now but when you hear my first cries and when you look in my eyes you'll understand why why you brought me to life so don't close the book on me yet I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. That was yours truly singing Untold, written by Matthew West. Good morning and welcome to the Jewish Pro-Life live stream. Today is Thursday, May 14th, 2020, in the 20th day of ER in the year 5780, and we're in the 35th day of the Elmer count. I'm Cecily Routman, founder and president of the Jewish Pro-Life Foundation. We'll be here for about 20 minutes of live chat news, education, enlightenment, and spiritual renewal. So if you're on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter this morning, please chat with us. At the Jewish Pro-Life Foundation, we're saving Jewish lives and healing Jewish hearts by providing the Jewish community with much-needed pro-life education, pregnancy care and adoption referrals, and healing after abortion. We started our work in 2006 because we were concerned about the high rates of abortion in the Jewish community. The fact that a majority of Jews believes that abortion is morally acceptable at all stages of pregnancy, and that this majority vigorously advocates for abortion, and tragically, this leads to more loss of unborn life across all demographics, and it contributes to anti-Semitism because people see us in a bad light. Also, we wanted to provide a Jewish pro-life voice in the public square. It's estimated that in Israel, 30,000 Jewish children lose their lives to abortion every year. And in America, it's estimated that 17,622 Jewish children die from abortion every year. But abortion doesn't just take one life. It wipes out entire generations. Many future descendants are lost with each abortion, and as Jews, we feel the pain and loss of each and every one. So if you are a Jewish parent facing unplanned pregnancy and you can't get the support you need from family, friends, or your shul community, please contact us. We have Jewish-friendly pregnancy care resources to help you and can get you connected to them today. Also, we have many Jewish couples who would love to meet you and raise your child in a loving Jewish home. To save your baby's life, please contact me today at 412-758-3269, or you can email me at cecily at jewishprolifefoundation.org. 
If you've had an abortion experience and are suffering because of it, we have an excellent effective healing program specifically designed for Jewish men and women, and it's available to you at no cost, regardless of your level of observance or affiliation. To start your life-changing healing journey, please contact me. Again, you can call me at 412-758-3269 or email me at cecily at jewishprolifefoundation.org. The Jewish Pro-Life Foundation is a 501c3 educational organization. Since 2006, we've been saving Jewish lives by promoting life-saving solutions to unplanned pregnancy in the Jewish community. We provide education about the development, viability, and sanctity of unborn life, as well as traditional Jewish law regarding abortion. We inspire Jews to welcome pre-born Jewish children into the inclusive movement of modern Jewish life and religion. We provide adoption and pregnancy care referrals, and we teach our community about the harmful effects of abortion and provide support to Jewish women and men who suffer from post-abortion syndrome. We do have a website. It's jewishprolifefoundation.org. You can visit our website for information, help, and healing. We are an educational organization. We have no affiliation with any Jewish denomination, political organization, or the Messianic movement. We speak to each Jew one-on-one because we believe that each Jew has a personal relationship with Hashem And it is through this relationship that we derive a life-affirming view. We are not a public charity and we don't fundraise. If you'd like to contribute to our work, please visit the donate page on our website and make an online donation using our PayPal button, or you can send a check to our postal address listed there. Today's news of the day, I want to go over two items that happened on this day in history. So in this day in 1942, in the ghetto of Kovno, the Nazis decreed the execution of all pregnant Jewish women. The Nazis did give the Jewish doctors in the ghetto an out about this, though. The woman would not be killed if the Jewish doctors did abortions on women up through seven months gestation. Now, if the pregnancy was of the eighth and ninth month, the Jewish woman should have her baby and deliver it. And then, of course, that baby would be taken by the Nazi doctors and have experiments done on it and killed. So this is this is a very challenging show today. I just would like you to hang in there for a few minutes. So, so here is a an accounting of this decree that was left by one of the rabbis in the ghetto. He said, on the 20th of ER, in the year 1942, the accursed Germans, may their name be blotted out, issued a decree as follows. Any Jewish woman found to be pregnant has one fate, but to die. That very day, a pregnant Jewish woman walked by the ghetto hospital, and one of the German murderers noticed her passing by in fury shot at her to kill her in accordance with the law for violating their ban on being fruitful and multiplying. When the bullet of her killer pierced her heart, she collapsed on the ground and breathed her last. So tragic, it's unbelievable. So this rabbi, Ephraim Oshrei, he wrote an opinion about what to do, what to do. So he believed the Nazis when they said that they would spare the woman's life if the Jewish doctors did an abortion. So they, he said it would be okay to do the abortion in order to save the mother's life. So they were doing these abortions in these huts on the floor, very unsanitary, no antibiotics, which in itself is torture. And of course it didn't work anyway because everybody got killed. According to the history, The Kovno Ghetto was established by Nazi Germany to hold the Lithuanian Jews during the Holocaust. At its peak, the ghetto held 29,000 people, most of whom were later sent to concentration camps for forced labor or Auschwitz, where they died or they were shot. So it didn't work. It was a lie. The Nazis told 
the Jews that their women would be saved if the abortions were done. And I would just like to say this is still a lie today. If any woman is told that she needs to have an abortion in order to save her life, this is not true, especially now when there are so many resources available for women, safety, sanctuary, pregnancy care help, medical help, financial help, adoption services. So this is, was always a lie. There were doctors, Jewish doctors in these ghettos that refused to do the abortions and they hid the women. The women gave birth to their babies and then the babies were spirited away and adopted by righteous Lithuanian women. Wasn't that a much better solution to this problem? Now it is understandable in, in a dire situation like this, in a radical situation like this, that people choose what the best solution that seems apparent at the time. But any time, other th in Judaism, we only have one exception to our prohibition of abortion, and that is when a woman has a breech birth, a medical problem that is going to kill her. And, and as I've said before on this program, beyond that, any exception to the prohibition is a corruption. And it is still used today by many abortion advocates. And we must remember that there are many lies around the abortion issue. They all lead to death and despair. Now, the second item of the news today is that on this day in history, the Hadassah University Hospital and Medical Center was opened in Jerusalem. Now, that's a wonderful thing. In 1939, can you imagine a wonderful hospital that was built there and opened there? But in that Hadassah University Hospital and Medical Center, they do first and second trimester abortions. And interestingly enough, the abortions that they do are just drug induced. So in the first trimester abortion, they're doing chemical abortion, which we've talked about before on this show. But that does not work for a second trimester baby. It only works, it's only safe for a first trimester baby. Once the baby gets older, it's not safe. So my thought is that they are deliberately inducing death in these second trimester babies and then delivering them, and they could be viable at that point. So they're delivering them in the hospital. Now, of course, I can't know the numbers, and they're not saying, but when we cite the estimate of 30,000 Jewish children losing their lives to abortion in Israel every year, that does not include these private abortions done in hospitals. Those, are, those numbers are only showing socialized medicine abortions. So, yes. So let us just pray Hashem has mercy on the souls of the people in the ghettos who believe the lies, the doctors who felt that they had no choice but to take the lives of these children, the German soldiers who did the murdering of the Jews and their children. May Hashem just have mercy on all of us. We are all here trying to learn and understand how best to learn from our mistakes. And in that spirit, I would like to look at our Homer count for today, because, of course, Rabbi Nachman has such inspiring words to share with us. So for the Omer count today, the day 35 in our practice, enhance your humility and modesty, enhance your humility and modesty by firmly establishing your place within the world as it is while maintaining attachment to Hashem through personal prayer and meditation. This will empower you to assist both yourself and others spiritually and materially. It is stated in the Talmud by Rabbi Nathan. If you are holding a sapling in your hand and someone tells you, come quickly, the Messiah is here, first finish planting the tree and then go to greet the Messiah. This is because, well, he has a vital role to play in the redemption, so do we. If each of us will embrace our tasks with joy, then everything will work out perfectly. Set your mind to performing your tasks as best you can and leave the rest to your peers. 
and to Hashem. And it is taught to us, right, by our sages, our sages and righteous leaders that the killing of the innocent delays the coming of the Messiah, delays the coming of the redemption. And in fact, it maintains this culture of death and despair in the world today. Which brings me then to our slides of the day. I want to show you today, we've decided to use two slides today that underscore this message. And we always start our educational component with our prayer. May there be abundant peace from heaven and good life upon us and upon all Israel. Amen. And we quote from our Zohar. This is slide 107. There are three persons who drive away the Shekinah from the world, making it impossible for the Holy One, blessed be he, to fix his abode in the universe and causing prayer to be unanswered. The third is he who causes the fetus to be destroyed in the womb, for he destroys the artifice of the Holy One, blessed be he, and his workmanship. For these abominations, the spirit of holiness weeps. God creates humans to promote his will on earth. Abortion interrupts the will of heaven. This is dangerous and short-sighted. We do this at our own peril. And there are so many ways to save lives. So just to conclude this segment of our show today, Judaism emphasizes the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death making it incumbent upon Jews to find ways to save lives when dealing with unplanned and unwanted pregnancy. Adoption, marriage, and single parenthood are much better choices for Jews, and I would say for anyone, than the intentional killing of an innocent life to avoid embarrassment, inconvenience, or hardship. When pregnancy results from a mistaken judgment or action, killing innocent life is not the answer. So choosing life avoids perpetuating the anti-Semitic origins of the abortion industry. Choosing life for our unborn children saves them from a violent, painful death by abortion and allows them to live with a family, one of our making or an adoptive family. Many Jewish couples waiting to adopt Jewish babies are willing to give safe haven during pregnancy for women who have no support from family. Many less than perfect babies and babies conceived in less than perfect conditions are very much wanted for adoption. Single parenting can lead to a beautiful future for you and your child. Much help is available. So we want to end there on a positive note and see who chatted with us today. Oh, we have our friend from Chicago saying hello. Hi, thank you for being here. And our friend from Pennsylvania, Shalom, and thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here again this morning. We really do appreciate you joining our joining our live stream show. We do we try to create a positive but educational experience for folks today. And we are going to end with our Pro-life rabbis, I love to talk about them. If you're looking for a pro-life rabbi, we have three wonderful ones. Rabbi David Novak is our vice president on our board. He's a professor of religion and philosophy at the University of Toronto and a member of the University College and Joint Center for Bioethics. He's available to discuss Jewish theology, ethics, bioethics, natural law theory, and Jewish-Christian relations. You can email Rabbi Novak at david.novak at utoronto.ca. Rabbi Nachman is available to speak on the sanctity of human life in Judaism, what it means to be Jewish, the benefits of prayer, and welcoming Noahidim into fellowship. Rabbi Nachman has a very active online shul. You can connect with him at learnamuna.com or email him directly at learnamuna at gmail.com. Rabbi Manasha Bovit is the spiritual leader of Belarus Jewish Center in Queens, New York. He educates using traditional texts, history, anthropology, archaeology, and modern academic biblical studies. 
Rabbi Bovet is a strong advocate of the State of Israel. He's active in interfaith activities and president of the Eastern Queens Interfaith Council. Please contact Rabbi Bovet at bellarosrabbi at yahoo.com, B-E-L-L-E-R-O-S-E, rabbi at yahoo.com. Any of these gentlemen welcome your comments or your questions. We do have a healing program for Jewish men and women. It's called Tikva Rachel. It offers a healing pathway for Jews who seek a confidential, safe, accepting Jewish program to address the deeply personal issues that arise after abortion. The program is based on Teshuvah and the promise of healing in Judaism. We also offer post-abortion grief training for rabbis, therapists, and counselors. You can start your healing journey today by contacting us to share your personal story with me. I'm, I care about your personal story. The calls and emails are confidential and caring. Again, you can call me at 412-758-3269 or email me at cecily at jewishprolifefoundation.org. And before we close, I want to invite our listening audience to join us at the annual March for Life in Washington, D.C. We do attend to show Jewish support for the most defenseless humans among us. We have a handheld sign that's very popular there. If you'd like a sign, you can come to the march and we'll have one for you. If you can't make it to Washington, D.C., but you'd like to attend a march locally, please contact me. I'll be happy to send you a sign in our welcome packet. And you can uh, visit our calendar page on our website for updates about marches and our travel itinerary to Washington. So that brings our show to a close this morning. Thank you very much for being here. Please share the information with your family and friends. We want to be able to nurture and support a life-affirming culture in the Jewish community and beyond our community and return our culture to a life-affirming culture where all lives are held to be valued and dignified and worthy of protection. So today, as we go into our day, let's choose life. I'm the news that nobody expected. I was never a part of your plan. And the reason why life as you know it feels like slipping through your trembling hands and the doctors say i'm just an option a mistake you can make disappear i may not have a voice but i'm more than a choice i'm as real as the heartbeat you hear so don't close the book on me yet i've still got a long way to go Empty pages to fill, and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. I am God's miracle in the making. Proof that all things can work. Oh, and heaven already knows. The name you pick out for me already belongs to me. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. Every life is sacred and every life is a gift and every life deserves a chance to live. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. I know you're scared right now. But when you hear my first cries and when you look in my eyes, you'll understand why, why you brought me to life. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. I am a story untold. May there be abundant peace from heaven and good life upon us and upon all Israel. Amen.